Hi everyone, I want to highlight the inner bounty monk that we're gonna have next season. So this is a very curious setup, it combines two sets, the new reworked inner set based around mystic allies and you're gonna use the water allies here with the like, tsunami type of playstyle just obliterating everything around you essentially and the raiment set with the four piece bonus that allows you to dash infinitely as long as you have enough spirit. So this is already a setup that has been used for bounty monks with Faith of Light, but there you always had to do like the gear swap with like three or four items. So you need to keep the raiment set in your inventory and then equip it and dash to the bounty you wanted to go and then swap back so it can actually deal any kind of damage. But now you can wear this permanently with no gear swap required. So what you have to do is you have to stack up a lot of cooldown and a lot of resource cost reduction. Essentially in every single slot you want to have those two stats including your rings so even gonna drop some of your damage stats like crit damage or so. And then you combine this with the Guardian's Path which gives you extra spirit region when you have a Daibo equipped and you're actually gonna wear the inner Daibo so this is amazing you have this massive two-handed weapon so that's pretty fun. And you also roll spirit region on your weapon and on your helm. And all that can lead to something like 90 spirit per second regenerated. This is actually massive. So the setup looks like this here. You have the six piece inners, you have the three pieces of raiment, Ring of Our Grandeur. You have the two mystic ally supporting items that got buffed in this patch, the Binding of the Lesser Gods and the Crudus Boots. And then you have the message mid here so that whenever you get some kills, you can also activate your mystic allies more often and you'll be able to spam anything. Your Epiphany, your Mystic Allies also gives you 200 spirit instantaneously when you press the button and you can do that every few seconds as well because the base cooldown is just like 12 seconds or something so every few kills you can do that. And you see here the cost of a dashing strike for example is only 38 spirit. So just with your passive region you can do like two and a half dashing strikes per second and then you can you know do even more when you press Mystic Allies so you can almost sustain infinite dashing strikes. The damage is more than fine. This is a solo T16 run, so I've just tried it out and stuff, but you see pretty much everything dies instantly. And even in the Foreman run, this is 1500 Paragon, nothing crazy. Uh, you could obliterate stuff in pretty much the same pace. It's very amazing, definitely a very cool way to play bounties, and it might become kind of like the, the bounty setup of choice, I believe, because it's just so fast, much faster than like a Demon Hunter or even Typhon Wizard with uh, Ender Walker. So those builds are not going to be bad, they're still like top tier for bounties, but I feel like this one just ha kind of like has the great consistency of being super mobile, going over cliffs and all that, and uh, it is a bit squishy and that's basically the only downside of it. So if this monk is going to have two top tier bounty setups in the future, one is the Wave of Light and one is this now and I think this might actually still see kind of like a small improvement or so depending on what they do exactly with uh, the inner monk in the final patch notes. So for now we'll have to wait and see but I don't think that much is going to change about this setup because it already uses the water ally and it also uses the Daibo so it doesn't even need an inferior weapon so this is essentially exactly the non-season setup you're playing here. There's no way to include an inferior weapon because of the set requirements so you have to wear the set weapon, but it doesn't really matter because the damage is so nice anyway. And you know it is not going to get weaker again after the season is over. Keep in mind that this was recorded on the PTR with like 200 ms latency. So for something like dashing strike where you need very precise you know, movement and uh, go really fast, this is quite horrible. And on the live stores of let's say 50 ms, 80 ms or something like that, it's going to feel even much more smoother, much faster, especially if you know your way through bounties and you know most of the maps, then you can go really quick with this. There's some other perks on this as well because you're, for example, CC immune, so that you can click on these objectives sometimes without getting interrupted, that's amazing. And you also have to cycle strike in there to apply bindings with the lesser gods for extra damage. So you can do that on bosses or sometimes on elites, maybe very early in the season when you're like Paragon 500 or so you might be a bit weak in terms of DPS, so you can just do a cycle strike and everything will evaporate. But most of the time this is not even necessary here. So that's basically something I just do on the bosses. The best way to conserve some resources is definitely to not hold down the dashing strike button, but rather just tap it really quickly. I think this gives you more control without wasting your resources. 
because sometimes you might be starting to dash into a wall and if you don't notice this like immediately you will you know waste like three four cars into the wall and uh, this might slow you down actually so something to be aware about but otherwise it is very smooth so pretty cool setup here for the monk i'm quite excited to try this out myself more when the season comes and see if this actually overall feels much better than for example typhoon wizard or multishot dh or something like that in the live servers and also a shout out to Norfar who kind of brought this to my attention i uh, didn't make such a bounty setup at the beginning but he uh, told me about this uh, raymond combo and it is definitely working really well so i tried it for myself here on the ptr and the results were quite promising so pretty cool stuff I'm gonna have more to share about the inner monk as well in the near future so stay tuned for that i'm gonna talk about solo pushing and uh, the speed runs and all that and there will definitely be some guides for that coming up so hope you like this video here and see you guys next time